<laughs> Hello. I was just trying to figure out how you um how you do the live stream. It's my first time going live. <laughs> this is our first time going live. You see the baby here. Yes, it is our first time figuring out the kinks. Yeah. We're ready and waiting. Okay, uh, wow, 55 of you online, and I was saying I would start when we reach 50, but <laughs> 55 of you are interested in what this one has to say. You guys hearing us all right? You hearing me all right? Just type a yes if you're hearing what I'm saying right now. You're live, yes. You hearing me? Can you hear me now? Good. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, not. Hearing. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, hi, guys. I'm Kalila Ross. <laughs> and this is Mr. Money Mondays, Richie. Introduce yourself, Richie. Hi, I'm Richie. Apparently, I'm Mr. Money Mondays. <laughs> There's my boo. But my claim to fame now is I'm Kalila's husband. <laughs> Yeah, and this is Ryan fast asleep. Let me show you Ryan. Fast asleep in daddy's lap. So hopefully he stays asleep for the duration of this broadcast. Uh, but if not, we work it out. We figure it out. 82. Wow. Baby, you're famous. <laughs> 82 people famous. 82 people wanted to hear what you have to say. Your boss. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> All right. So this whole thing started out of a conversation that we had earlier this afternoon. So I was watching a YouTube video about a possible recession, and Richie said, well, "First of all, introduce yourself. So what's your what's your background? What makes you an expert on this topic?" First of all, I wouldn't consider myself an expert on this topic. However, I have my own views as to the whole. COVID-19 and how it will likely pan out. I'm Richard Reynolds, a medical doctor since 2006, currently a resident in training in orthopedic surgery of all things. So, so how come you're not at work today? Because of the effects of COVID-19 on the health system. What happened? So because of patients being housed at the hospital that I work at, the university hospital, they have made changes to the day-to-day -day functioning to limit the exposure of staff as well as potential patients and visitors. And so we're trying to limit the amount of traffic that goes through the hospital on a day-to-day -day basis, including staff. So they have you on a rotation so you don't go in every day? Pretty much. But you would think that you know, in a time like this, it's all hands on deck for staff. Well, that depends on the number of patients that are present. So it can reach the situation where all hands on deck will be necessary. But to this point, we haven't reached there yet. So the numbers aren't sufficient in terms of the numbers of patients with COVID-19 for emergency staff to be called out, additional staff to deal with the patient load. Okay, yeah, because right now it's just 15 island-wide, right? And one, one well, person. Well, 12 died. confirmed island-wide. It was... Well, I think it's 13 now. Right. Yeah, it's 13, 13 as of the day, and then one person died today who is an, an elderly person with history of diabetes, diabetes and hypertension, hypertension. right? 79-year-old right. man. So that person had multiple risk factors for severe disease. Um, when you look at the numbers worldwide, the persons who end up with severe disease and the persons who are at highest risk of dying are the elderly patients, yeah. the highest risk group in terms of age of those over 80, and patients with chronic illnesses, especially those that affect the immune system, like diabetes. Yeah. 
So like for me, right, I have been up until maybe last week, a little bit nonchalant about this whole thing. Like, okay, people are overreacting. It's not that much worse than the flu. Is it that much worse than the flu? Potentially. Depends on your risk. So for the vast majority of people, it will present with very mild symptoms, kind of like the common cold or the flu. But if you're in a high-risk group, you have some kind of respiratory condition, asthma, or some other issues with the lungs. Or if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, any issues which affect your immune system, or you're over the age of 80, then you fall into a high-risk group in terms of developing severe disease. And this so for people over disease, 80, it's much, much worse, much worse than the flu. Right. But for us regular Correct. younger people, it's not that much worse than the flu. Correct. So young, fit, healthy people who are not on any medication for anything, their risk is low for developing severe disease. And the mild form of this disease is not any worse than the flu. Mm -hmm. It actually may even be milder than the typical flu. Mm. So... So I haven't been too worried because I'm like, okay, we're young, fit, healthy, like Richie just said. But then you also have to think about other people. So Richie's parents come to our house literally every day to help us with the kids, with the babies. And they're in their 70s. And I just keep thinking, you know, what if I was to not be vigilant and not wash my hands how I'm supposed to, not sanitize how I'm supposed to, and then... I end up catching it and passing it on to them inadvertently. Like I might not even be symptomatic yet. I might not even know I have it. And then I end up passing it on to them and they're in that high risk group. So I, in a time like this, we really need to think about other people. And fortunately, children and babies don't seem to be that badly affected, right? Correct. Um, the worldwide statistics last time I looked at them nobody under the age of 10 had died from it despite hundreds of thousands of people being infected worldwide there were no deaths under the age of 10 years mm. well that's oh somebody wake up I say eyes open go back to sleep <laughs> I think he's come back to sleep all right, so here's the controversial part now. So we were having a conversation this afternoon. You saw me watch about, what was it, recession? recession? Something about recession, a YouTube video. And I just see Richie start to make up a face. Like, I'm like, why that face? So, so what was your issue with what I was watching? I didn't really have an issue with what you're watching. It's just that there are different spins on it. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of recession, and you can probably define a recession for so, those who may not be. So, a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative growth. So, we have had 20 quarters of positive growth. However, the last quarter, which was up to December, to have been September to December, we growth was minuscule, just 0.1%. So, we've already been heading in that direction and remember as well last year the economists were predicting a recession a global recession for 2020 so with covid 19 now this just makes things worse for the entire globe and then for jamaica in particular like i said last quarter growth was just 0.1 percent and a lot of that had to do with the closure of the bauxite industry well not the entire industry but the alpart plant the jisco alpart plant that was closed and if you recall, the reopening of that plant two years ago led to a, a huge boom in that industry, like 30-odd percent growth, almost 40 percent growth in that industry, which helped the entire economy because so much is built around it. So that's gone. And then now we come into this quarter with COVID-19, tourism industry impacted. You have the job losses are already beginning, be they temporary as they may. This means people won't be able to service their loans. People won't be able to pay credit cards. All these businesses are shutting down for God knows how long. And like I said, the entire tourism industry is you know, on the brink because people have canceled vacations, canceled cruises. I saw in the paper today that 
Rio sent home a thousand workers, other hotels doing the same. And so I, I think this quarter for sure, we're going to see negative growth. And I am almost certain that we'll have, a, this will spill over into another quarter, which would be the April, well, it's negative growth this quarter to March, and then it will spill over into the April to May, June, July quarter. And that would be two consecutive quarters of negative growth. That's what I expect to happen. But you think there, there's an ulterior motive for people talking about a recession? Well, I think it's a real possibility. But I also think that the drive for a recession may benefit some more than others. <laughs> what do you mean? Benefit so, some like who? There are certain products. If this recession is driven by COVID-19, yeah. there are certain things that are used in the treatment of something like this or in the prevention. And as you can see, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical products, products mm -hmm. things like sanitizers, especially because all the talk has been about, oh, make sure you sanitize, make sure you sanitize, make sure you sanitize. But then that's true. You need to sanitize, don't it you? It is. It is true. Mm -hmm. But you can also simply use soap and water and wash your hands. That's a... But the people who make sanitizer aren't the same people who make soap? No. Not all the time, but there are some persons who make both yeah. soap and sanitizer. And so those people will definitely benefit. So it's not going to be that across the board, everybody is going to lose from this. And there are persons who will benefit. So it's not all industries across the board that are going to be completely wiped because of this. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, yeah. But that's but that's natural. Though. Every exactly. every disaster, every you know thing, situation like this, you're gonna have people who will end up benefiting even inadvertently exactly and the trick i think is that you need to recognize that there are persons who will benefit and essentially ride that wave so if it is at all possible that during this period where persons are for example selling shares at very low cost if you're able to invest in a company that you know produces these things, then their results will supersede their previous expectations because their products are going to be going off the shelves mm -hmm. as soon as they drop. Mm -hmm. And so their sales will go up, their profits will go up, it'll be a supply and demand issue, and their prices will also go up despite increasing sales, which is the equivalent of increased profit price gouging their price <laughs> it's not necessarily price gouging because it the price is determined by market factors but it, so, isn't there like an ethical thing to it though like you shouldn't raise prices in a time like this it's you have to consider though that there is going to be a production cost and at some point the materials required are going to become less and less available, meaning that the materials required for production are also going to increase in cost. Okay. And as a result, their prices are going to go up. Fair enough. I saw, and I wasn't able to verify this, but I saw a journalist say that the port is closed effective today. I checked my email. I didn't see an announcement. I should have asked him to send me the... the actual announcement but if the port is closing imagine the implications of that exactly. exactly what you're saying materials will become you know less will become scarce because we don't know how long that closure will last it's not just raw materials for pharmaceuticals but food, everything 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 that you could imagine like i went out today for the first time in several days and it felt like the twilight zone i hadn't been outside well just 
outside of my neighborhood, because I've been in the neighborhood on my street and so on, but not like out, out. I went to Sovereign and barely anywhere open, first of all. The place is deserted. I got my hand sanitized like 15 times in the space of about half an hour because everywhere you go, you have to sanitize before you go in. And then on my way out, I asked for more sanitizer again because if I'm touching the door, then I want a sanitizer there. I want to sanitize after I touch the door. And I just started thinking, you know, maybe the doomsday preppers <laughs> got it right that we need to start stocking up on groceries and stuff. You think we need to stock up? Um, the reason I'd say yes is that things like this elicit panic because people are just not sure and when there's something that's unknown the response that people inevitably end up with is a panic response and so there, you'll find that there will be a period of panic buying mm -hmm. and that will just clear the shelves just like it did in other places in the world in new york i've seen pictures of shelves that are just completely empty yeah. and i think that similarly the reaction here may be just the same. Trying to read some air as well. So the other thing that you said today that was very controversial, the port is not closed, the opening time is just shorter. Okay, thanks for that clarification, Whitney. Uh, what was it that we were talking about where you said, oh, we're talking about social distancing. So I went to Sovereign and I went to KFC and KFC has this new thing now where you, you must only stand up on the white tile. So they put in some white tiles last night. I asked the security, was this always here? I don't remember seeing these white tiles. And they've spaced the white tiles three feet apart. And they've told their customers, it's, while you're standing in line, only stand on the white tiles. A social distancing, like people take it serious. Because I'm wondering, why are people spaced out like, well, I know why, but I didn't expect people to really adhere to the social distancing um, recommendation that strictly, but because they in KFC have put these white tiles on the floor, it makes it easy to gauge how far apart you're supposed to stand. And so this whole social distancing recommendation is another thing that you have an interesting take on. So, so what were you telling me about social distancing right. today? So social distancing will essentially decrease the rate of spread. Mm -hmm. So, less people will get it in a particular span of time. However, when you look at the overall number of people that will end up with the disease condition, it is going to end up around the same in the long run. It's just that it will take a longer time for the same number of people to get infected. What that does is a couple of things. So. If you practice social distancing, you'll prolong the time that it takes for persons to become immune. So a community, there's what's called herd immunity, where if enough persons in a, in a community are immune to a condition, it's unlikely for somebody who is not immune to get the condition because there's nobody to get it from. Well, hold on. Though. So people... Do you really get immune by exposure to a disease? Because if that was the case, then how come the flu still exists and dengue fever still exists and you can catch it more than once and all these things? So with the flu, a number of different viruses cause the flu. The whole idea behind mm -hmm. the flu vaccine is the fact that you become immune to certain strains of the virus once you get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. If you were to get that particular strain of the virus, you also become in, immune to it. But there are so many different viruses that cause the flu that you can't become immune to all of them from one vaccine. Mm -hmm. And so if you get a flu during this flu season, it may be a completely different strain that is causing the next flu for the next flu season. And so you may still be susceptible to that strain of the virus, but immune to another. With this COVID-19... No, but even if you, if you don't get the vaccine and you catch the flu, that doesn't make you immune to other flus. 
right, it doesn't make it immune to other flus, but it makes it immune to the specific flu that you got. Oh, really? Yes, so that's So every time virus. you catch the flu, it's a different kind of flu? Every single time? Every time. Wow. There are many, many viruses and different strains that they've named the There's major There's that many ones. flus? There are that many flus. So, for example, there was the H1N1 or swine flu that was a craze about five or six years ago. And that, again, caused severe respiratory disease. And that was why there was a big global uproar about that. The bird flu, which is, I think, H5N6. But there are many different strains of viruses that cause the flu and so with each strain when you get it you're not immune to that particular strain mm -hmm. all right so i took you off tangents you're right. making, the, I point was about making social the point distancing. about social distancing so if you practice social distancing the time that it takes for enough of the population to get the condition that you start experiencing herd immunity is increased significantly so you will get continued infection occurring over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. However, if you were to do away with social distancing and allow the virus to be transmitted as it would without trying to prevent it, then what you would get is a rapid spike in the number of persons with the virus. Mm -hmm and an equally rapid fall in the number of persons infected over time because you start getting herd immunity a lot quicker. So you get a rapid spike and then a rapid fall off and then you get very few cases after that because the majority of persons would have been immune to it and you'd protect your population because of that herd immunity effect. So you think that we shouldn't do social distancing? So, the negative part about not doing social distancing is the effect it has on the general population. So, the healthcare services have a limit anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a limit to the capabilities of the healthcare services. With a virus like this, that's easy to transmit and that has the potential to cause significant uh, respiratory illness that can lead to death, then you can quickly overhaul your medical capabilities. So you supersede the capacity of your medical um, services in your country mm -hmm. to deal with the number of persons with the condition with severe disease. That leads to people getting inappropriate treatment or not being able to access treatment at all. And a number of people who may have survived will then die because there are simply too many persons for the healthcare system to manage. And our healthcare system in Jamaica is already strained as it is. And so social distancing here may actually be absolutely necessary based on just that so is there anywhere social dis that the theory that you were mentioning would work that it should just be allowed to everybody should just be allowed to catch it don't worry about social distancing build up the immunity faster and we get over this faster so probably the only place that that would have happened was wuhan the epicenter of this whole thing because they would have had the first few cases and they wouldn't have known that this would have developed so quickly so they would have had many people just get it all at once because it's highly transmissible from person to person and a lot of people would have gotten it even before they recognized the seriousness of the condition mm -hmm. and as a result they would have had a very large spike of numbers of persons infected in a very short space of time. And they, that's why they had to build a whole new hospital in such a short space of time. Mm -hmm. But 
the flip side of that is that now that they've had so many people infected they've now begun to see that well they've had a significant decrease in the number of persons new infections mm -hmm. so they've had a significant decrease in the number of new infections and i suspect a part of the reason for that is that they had so many persons infected in the first place that now they have a significant portion of their population that's immune to it mm -hmm. kind of like us with chick v everybody caught exactly chick -V. everybody caught chick v i didn't catch it <laughs> lucky you you'll probably you didn't get it either no i didn't in this house got it we we're fortunate but so all right so in china they are now basically on the road to recovery they had their first cases in december, december. it's taken them about three months Right. to recover so so based on what you've been saying then it's gonna take us a lot longer than three months exactly to so recover. it'll probably take maybe double that time period before we get new cases and new infections starting to decline but um so that means italy will recover fast too um italy is kind of a an anomaly in this whole thing because they're kind of in between so they were sort of practicing social distancing but it's not really not really at the same time they started late but italy is a large country and when they started getting increasing in numbers then they started putting in measures for social distancing and control. However, new information now is that when you have the symptoms of this COVID-19, you should not use ibuprofen or any other, what they call non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. NSAIDs. NSAID. So things like aspirin, cataflam, foltarin, diclofenac. There are a number of them on the market that you just shouldn't use when you have these symptoms See, i didn't know that cause i was asking you about this about last week probably because but i remember because that's the same thing they said when you get dengue right when you get dengue you don't use NSAIDs, don't use um what do you call it? Ibuprofen, ibuprofen ibuprofen diclofenac advil which is one of my favorite medications to take because in dengue it, it increases the hemorrhagic effect right correct is that the same reason that you shouldn't take it for covid 19. it's different what they've found is that with the covid 19 virus taking those medications increases your risk of getting severe respiratory disease so mm -hmm. it's not that it causes hemorrhagic disease but it increases your chances of getting severe respiratory disease there's also one class of drugs for high blood pressure that may have an effect on increasing your chances and those are called ACE inhibitors and there are a long list of those as well uh, that may increase your chance of developing severe disease which is which may explain the increase in severe disease with high blood pressure mm. the I saw somebody ask about vitamin C. So yeah. things like vitamin oh, yeah, C good. <laughs> that will boost your immune system, help you to prevent yourself from becoming infected with the virus in the first place. And therefore it is beneficial. Mm. So, but for most of us, that's that's to build the immunity but if you suspect you have it stick to panadol stick to panadol safe bet so acetaminophen paracetamol those drugs are safe somebody asked what's the best thing to take then for the pain i'll say panadol yeah panadol yeah uh what else was i gonna ask you about right the other point i was making about this whole social distancing, social distancing thing is that in terms of the use of personal protective equipment so things like masks and gloves and all of those things are generally speaking not for 
everyone to do. So, if you are high risk and you need to go out because it's not likely for persons to be able to stay inside all the time, regardless of your risk. So, if you're high risk and you need to go out, then this virus is generally spread by respiratory droplets. So, oh. when people speak, when people cough, when people sneeze, these droplets end up out in the air. If they get into your respiratory tract, along your nasal passages, through your mouth, into your respiratory tract, then you'll become infected or you're likely to become infected depending on how much of the virus gets there. So if you can cover your nose and mouth with a mask and make sure that you don't rub your eyes because there's actually a connection between your eyes and your nostrils, mm -hmm. then you can decrease the chances of you getting the condition. So if you're at high risk for any reason, and we outlined some of those before, if you're elderly, have diabetes or anything else that will affect your immune system, hypertensive, or have any kind of respiratory disease, and you need to go out, simply cover your face, nose and mouth with a mask, wear goggles of some sort. Do we need these N95 masks? What, what are the N95 so masks? What's special about it? The N95 masks are a special set of respirator masks. And there are two sets of them. There are N95 dust masks and N95 respirator masks. Oh. The ones that are recommended are the respirator masks. And for the general population, no, they're not necessary. These masks are actually meant for medical personnel who have to perform certain procedures which will cause large amounts of the virus to become aerosolized into very small particles in a short space of time and need to be completely filtered out. And these masks will filter out 95% of the particulate matter that you're breathing through it. And that's why they're denoted N95. Mm. What does it mean when something is aerosolized? Because I heard them saying that this virus can be or is aerosolized. So, if you think about, for example, uh, air freshener, when you spray that air freshener, it becomes aerosolized. Very small, fine particles that remain suspended in the air. That's all that that really means. And so, if they remain suspended in the air for a while, Somebody can cough or sneeze, it remains in the air for a while before it settles onto a surface. But if somebody else breathes in that air, then it that person can become infected. Isn't that the same thing that happens with the flu? Quite similar, yes. Okay. Oh, you are saying, you are making the point of earlier about how uh, once you catch the flu or even COVID-19 that you become immune to it. Right. But I've heard that people are being reinfected with it so the possibility exists that there may be more than one strain oh. of it and just like dengue where there are very small alterations in the virus that cause you to be able to get dengue more than once the same may be happening with COVID-19 and it may in fact, not necessarily be reinfection, but it may be reactivation. So they didn't clear it completely and then the symptoms flare up again after a short space of time. Oh, so that's like when, when you catch something and a doctor prescribed medication and you start taking it and then you feel better, so you just stop taking it and then you have more of a chance of getting it again. So Similar, but in terms of viruses, um, the treatment for viral infections tend to be simply uh, symptomatic. So you treat the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So the body essentially clears it eventually. Because this virus is so new, it was first identified November, December last year. The whole best practice in terms of managing it is still in evolution. So 
we're still learning new things about every day because just last week you said you were asking me about taking those medications mm -hmm. it was not until early this earlier this week that they found out about the ibuprofen and they actually have made a, the, the who made a recommendation either yesterday or today actually it's oh. brand new information wow that's people need to know that that is so and that was the problem you said in italy that they, the doctors were giving people ibuprofen right it's not that not even that the doctors were, were given it, but it. ibuprofen can be procured over the counter in some places and so including here so persons may have just been taking ibuprofen um with regards to morphine lyrica um dollar neurobian i believe also has uh, dipl diclofenac in it so that would be one of the drugs which is to be avoided but morphine and lyrica at this point in time the information is that that's fine cetamol is also fine that's acetaminophen but ibuprofen is definitely a no-no okay let's look at some of the other comments that we might have missed i'm able to scroll using the tablet uh what about temperature lowering medication like aspirin that can increase chances of death which is happening in france right so aspirin falls under the same class of drugs and like i said the who very recently put out a notice that it's if you have the symptoms you should avoid those drugs aspirin ibuprofen diclofenac all of those drugs that form on, fall under the category of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. All right. Aral Parrish also says, if you go to China and have taken any medication that lowers your temperature, you can get four years in prison. Wow. But doesn't Panadol lower your temperature too? Yes, it does. So then this can't apply to all drugs um, that lower your temperature. The difficulty I find with that is some persons may be wanting to travel to a foreign country most persons get screened at points of entry by taking their temperature so if you take a drug which artificially lowers your temperature with the intention to travel into a country um, I, I think that may be why they're putting that restriction i see uh Paul says, a doctor from Ministry of Health says we should avoid vitamin C. Can you explain that? Um, you hear about that? I have not. But I would have to ch check that and see exactly why. Uh, how will social distance work in our schools? Well, I guess that's why schools closed. <laughs> exactly. So, the social distancing among children it's a very difficult thing to explain and it's even more difficult to enforce children they are children like to yeah and so it's almost impossible to keep children three feet apart and so the safest thing to do if you're gonna enforce social distancing is to close schools greg says social distancing is what helps with herd immunity isn't that the opposite of what you were saying right so it you will get eventually get herd immunity social distancing increases the time period that it takes to occur without social distancing herd immunity occurs much quicker because the majority of the population gets the condition in a short space of time and once enough persons within the population have the condition, then you develop herd immunity. Is it likely there's going to be people are working So on vaccines it? take time to develop. And like any medication, they have to go through uh, different phases of trials before they reach the market. So it takes time before these things are available. And so a vaccine is likely to be developed, but it's not likely to be within this year. Not likely this year. Not likely this year. Yeah, because they have trials and stuff. So 
Uh, what else we have here? Kevin says, eat an orange every day and a mango. It's not mango season now. Soon. Yeah, soon. mango, Kevin, send me some. We have a but orange tree outside. Really? I haven't been outside. <laughs> I looked on the tree a long time. Uh, let's see what else. If we stop social distancing, the virus will start all over again. Social distancing doesn't stop the virus. Social distancing decreases the rate of spread of the virus. If you are able to maintain perfection in terms of social distancing, you can stop the spread of the virus. Now, once there is no further local spread of the virus, if you were to stop people from traveling, and everybody in the country get vaccinated then it would stop the virus from spreading in the country at all however that's not very likely to happen so if you maintain social distancing what you will do is slow down the rate of spread such that everybody who is in a situation where they have severe disease and need treatment can get the appropriate treatment mm -hmm. Chantel asks, are people who are diabetic and hypertensive considered high risk? That yes, would be a yes. Definitely. Definitely a yes. Uh, but vaccine, we asked that already. Uh, oh, is it true? Okay, I saw this video. I showed you this video online like yesterday or the day before. Is it true that COVID 19 dies at 134 degrees Fahrenheit and breathing in hot air up your nostrils at those temperatures can help? So, as far as I'm aware, there is no medical evidence to say this so there are speculations because one of the earlier statements about the virus from one of the doctors in china said that the virus in fact was heat sensitive meaning that if you expose it to heat the virus essentially degrades how this applies in the clinical setting when somebody is infected already with it is yet to be seen or proven medically so I'm not sure about the validity of that information I've seen no evidence mm. to say whether or not it is true but it couldn't hurt to try it the video I showed you the person was like using a blow dryer to breathe in the hot air <laughs> I would does not it, recommend anybody try? try that why like what what's the worst that could happen so because maybe it works firstly your respiratory tract is designed to do a couple of things to warm air that is breathed in and to moisten it a blow dryer as the name suggests is responsible for drying things out you don't want to leave your respiratory tract dry because that causes it to become inflamed and if it becomes inflamed then you're at higher risk of the virus becoming adherent to the inflamed lining of the respiratory tract and you're more likely to get an infection Ooh. but what if you do like a humidifier then Again, I'm not sure about what the evidence says where that is concerned. Okay. All right. Let me leave that one alone then. Uh, let's see. Other questions here online. Would, similar question. Would driving my car with AC on hot temperature aid in killing the virus? Again, not really. Answer. Yeah. 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 A 21-year-old who survived said she was told to take ibuprofen, so it was being recommended. It was being recommended, but like I said, this is brand new information from the World Health Organization within the last couple of days. Okay, so for those who tuned in late, somebody is asking uh, what exactly happens when you take ibuprofen with coronavirus. Just go over that again for right. those who so tuned in late. The exact um mechanism as to what it does hasn't yet been identified but it seems to increase your chances of getting severe disease in terms of the respiratory complications that are potentially life-threatening mm. siobhan asks good evening will this be a recurring virus like the flu every season 
So it would be a different kind of... Right. So, like I said before, once the majority of persons in a population get it, the likelihood of the same strain of virus causing a problem is significantly decreased. Mm -hmm. And so it's not likely to be... A, you're not likely to have a COVID-19 season next year. Oh, so same way how Chick V came and left and we're not, we don't really have it Pretty much. bothering us anymore. You don't hear people catch Chick V anymore. Pretty much. You'll still have people getting it, but it will be far fewer numbers. But if we don't build up the immunity, right? If we maintain the social distance and we end up with not many people catching it, then we could end up with COVID-19 season next year. But remember what I said, that social distancing doesn't prevent everybody from getting it. Mm -hmm. It just increases the length of time that it takes for the virus to spread throughout the population. So then that could, if we are effective at social distancing, that could delay it for years. Depends on how effective you are, but sure. Okay. Mom is on. Hi, Mom. Just your question. Mom asks, please explain what makes people who are hypertensive high risk. So the exact mechanism behind that is also not quite fully understood. But the part of the lungs that the virus goes into um, has some special cells that produce an enzyme. Now, one of the drugs that's used to treat hypertension actually counteracts that enzyme. And so they're thinking that mm. it's possible that the interaction between that drug, those cells, and the virus increases your risk. Oh, so it's the drugs, it's not necessarily the condition. Possibly. Possibly. Oh, that's the theory that they're working with. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> And through all of this, this little one's still sleeping. Yep. Still fast asleep. Let me see if we have any other questions. Oh, so tell me about you, because I saw when you haven't been to work the past two days. So you even know what's going on at you right now. <laughs> yeah. But you you're in the doctor's group, so you kinda keep up to date with what's going on. But I think Monday I saw Christopher Tufton post a video. That's the Minister of Health for the non Jamaicans watching we posted a video about the isolation units being constructed at UE. What, what's what's UE's readiness like now right so UHWI University Hospital of the West Indies they have isolation units already but because of the numbers increasing they had to increase the number of isolation units and so that's what they're in the process of increasing at this point in time. Also, they're making changes, like I said, in terms of restricting the traffic through the hospital. This, the mere fact that there are patients being housed at the hospital with the condition means that there are healthcare workers who are gonna be coming in contact with patients and that makes pretty much those areas, high risk areas. The more you don't people... work in those areas though, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Better stay there. So <laughs> I pack your suitcase and <laughs> said come home. Right. So the the measures that are being put in place see the decrease the traffic in general through the hospital as well as to keep these persons essentially isolated so other than the persons who are directly responsible for taking care of them they shouldn't come in contact with anyone else okay which is what they're trying to ensure uh, not only by constructing these rooms but by limiting traffic and making sure that the only persons with access to these areas are the persons directly re responsible for caring for these patients. Well, what about the um, the equipment? Because you were telling me the other day, 
even though I should say this, but not all the healthcare workers have all the equipment that's necessary. So the equipment that is necessary depends on what you are required to do. So for regular day-to-day -day managing of the patients, all you really need is goggles, a regular mask, and a gown and gloves that's readily available throughout the hospital. Thus far, as far as I'm aware, at UER hasn't been need for any additional procedures to be done that would create any additional risk. Okay. But for those persons who would be required to perform those procedures, those are the ones who would need the N95 masks and the special goggles and so on to prevent the aerosolized virus from infecting them. Okay. Guys, I'm not sure how much time we have left. I, I'm not sure if YouTube limits this to an hour and we're at 51 minutes already. So we might need to wrap this up pretty soon. I have a few more questions here. If a person who had asthma as a child and did not have an episode for 20 years, is this person still high risk? So the respiratory diseases, asthma is one of them, yes. But if the person had asthma as a child and has not been on medication and has not had an attack in 20 years, then chances are their airway is no longer hyperactive and their risk may be slightly increased over the general population but it's not likely that they are in the high risk category okay val is online my cousin val hey val Wait, where's val ellie i forget somewhere I in california so. i think is it recommended to use gloves and masks for preventative measures and would it be effective to help decreasing the spread? So we talk about the mask already. Masks. Or about gloves. Gloves are ne are not necessary if you remember to wash your hands. Okay. Because the virus doesn't get in through your skin. So if the virus is on your hands and you wash your hands, then you're fine. It's when you take your hands, touch an infected surface, or shake hands, for example, with somebody who has also got the virus on their hands, and, and then you go and touch, touch your face, face. Mm -hmm. and that allows it to now enter your respiratory tract. That's where the problem lies. So even if you have on gloves, and you touch an infected surface, and then touch your face with the gloves? Same problem. Uh. So the gloves, really, is for persons who have to come in direct contact with these persons and they're trying to limit the amount of viral virus that gets onto that person. So persons who wear gloves typically also wear masks and gowns. And so there's a whole process involved in getting prepared to see or interact with that person. And after interacting with the person, there's a whole reverse process that takes place in a specific order. So if you're going to be wearing gloves, you have to know how to properly put them on, and how to properly them take them off in order to decrease your risk. For real, because if you... All right, so you take off one glove with another gloved hand, but then now you're going to take off the other glove right, with so your there's, raw hand. There is a specific technique <laughs> to take off. So your this off hand gloves. is going to get right. whatever was on this hand with the glove. How do you take off the gloves? Magic. <laughs> Without getting it, your hands infected. Seriously, how do you do it? So, in order to take them off. Do you have any gloves here? No. You actually have to pinch the middle of the glove with the other gloved hand and roll it off. You hold that glove in the other hand and then you take your fingers and put on the inside of the glove the hand so that you're not touching the exposed surface of the glove you're touching the underside of the glove and then rolling it over that one Ooh. and then you wash your hands after you take off the gloves Magic. i 
think that was the last question. Uh, you have fans, Rich. <laughs> you have fans. Please get Dr. Reynolds to come on at another time. I learned so much. Thank you for informing us. Thanks for all the work you do. You guys are lovely together. Aww. Social, Social distance. distance. <laughs> guys well that's gonna be it for tonight if we have any other updates or any other questions you know, send me a dm let me know and maybe i can get the ugly half <laughs> the other half <laughs> to come on again uh oh we have one more question based on the severity of this virus compared to other world pandemics in the past like sars how long do you think this environment of panic, quarantines, etc., to last? That's a good question. So, in terms of SARS and the other respiratory viruses that um, came about, the duration of quarantine and isolation social distancing will really depend on the development of immunity. The other thing is how quickly they can come up with a vaccine. Because if you can vaccinate the population against it, then quarantine won't be necessary. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's important is the capacity of the healthcare system to deal with the complications. So, if you have infinite resources, for example, and you can build intensive care units to ensure that everybody who comes down with it will get appropriate care, then it's a short time All period. Right. So, the short answer to the question, how long will we be in quarantine, do you think? It varies. It's, it's not something that you can give a definite answer to. With regard to us here in Jamaica, we still have to control the import of new cases and try and limit the spread of cases locally. If we can get local cases under control and prevent new imported cases, then the quarantine period will be short. Mm. But it's something which has to be assessed intermittently he's asking so pretty much we can expect to be quarantined for at least another year until a vaccine is discovered tested proven and adopted no again the whole process of herd immunity will occur before it that I Kevin, go back and when when we finish the video it's gonna be up on the youtube channel because we spoke about this whole herd immunity thing and vaccine and all that you join late so go back and watch it from the beginning when we close the the video but if we can control the local spread now, treat all the cases that are presently here, then we will be able to allow less stringent measures in terms of quarantine. Mm -hmm. We'll still have to be vigilant, however, because we know that the majority of the population still is not immune. Yeah. And so we'll have to be vigilant, still practice um, good hygiene good personal hygiene and so this is the new normal essentially it's the new fortunately normal. that's a good thing that this is the new normal wash your hands folks use your hand sanitizers and social distancing good hygiene and social distancing as much as you can yep so when you come home from the hospital just go be <laughs> go straight to the bathroom and take a shower pretty much yeah actually anybody who goes on the road because you have no idea who has it true people can have it and be completely asymptomatic look at idris and sabrina was still all up on him <laughs> well thanks for watching everybody thanks for having me thanks for watching let me give you a last look at mr ryan Fast asleep throughout all of this. Because I'm the baby whisperer. <laughs> Five weeks old. We're going to be showing him or telling him about this years in the future. Saying, when you are a baby.
We survived COVID-19. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. And for those who joined late, you know, just go back and watch from the beginning later. See you later.